Welcome back to another SCP Resurrection reading. We'll be continuing our traverse through the old foes hub this time, and we'll be touching upon him and the other him by the pig head. Now, without further ado, him and the other him. He was not omniscient, and he did not always understand everything he did see. The fact was the opposite of another. His life was very simple. He was here because the unclean were everywhere else, because of their monstrosity and because of the destruction they had caused. His life was dedicated to purging the world of their evil. It was all so simple and easy to understand. With his tears and the help of his servants, he would be able to do it. No obstacle could prevent him from fulfilling his purpose. That was the way it was supposed to be, which was why seeing what he saw right now was confusing. Not annoying, not sad, not horrifying, just confusing. It wasn't supposed to be this way. He was the one who should win, and from what he saw from the mountaintop, this wasn't what was happening. Even if he was far away from the battlefields, he could see that his men, his militia, were surrounded. They were still fighting, those who were still alive, but he knew that their enemies were winning. That nothing could change the course of the battle, the course of these last battles. Because he could see that there would be no more. The unclean had taken over everything. Maybe joining the fight and giving hope to all his people could help, but it could also kill him. This was a misconception his followers often had about him. He wasn't a fighter, not only because the unclean were many and powerful, but also because it was not his role. It was not what he was supposed to do. His role was simple. Traveling through the universe, seeing if his enemies were there, and, if they were, extorting humans to join him. Giving them, with his tears, the power and the courage to fight. Then, when the war was won, disappearing, moving on. That he and his servants had lost this time, and all he could see was shadows and destruction. Generally, when he surveyed a world from atop a mountain, he felt only peace and satisfaction because he had done the right thing. Not now. For the first time, he couldn't help but feel sorry. So many resources had been used for fighting the unclean, and so many battles had led to this Homes, churches, turned to nothing but rubble, men, women, and maybe children who were dead or bereaved, and the slow realization for the first time that all of his work might be completely worthless. But he needed to move. This world was definitely lost, there was no time to waste. The unclean would not allow him time to mourn the loss of his people. As he began to go, he turned his head, one last time, to look at what he left behind. And in some small measure, he could sense that it was partially his fault for thinking it was impossible to lose after all his previous victories. He was not omniscient, and he did not always understand everything he did see. He had questions. One. Why was this new world so different from all the others he had previously visited? Why was the smell of the unclean suddenly so difficult for him to detect? Questions without a doubt more important than the one most sane people would be asking at this moment. Why were there people with weapons, and why were their weapons pointed at him? He was surprised because this had never happened to him before. Not the 
Oh, dear God, why, we're all screwed. There's too much life seems so meaningless all of a sudden kind of surprise. The same kind he could see on the same faces of some of his servants when they were close to death. More a, oh, what are these funny things kind. The men in front of him were entirely dressed in black, and they wore masks that covered their faces. He was unable to identify the arms they were using, but he could tell that they were calm, unafraid, as if they were prepared for his presence. For a moment, he thought they might be people who could follow him, help him accomplish his goal. Only for a moment. Another man appeared. He was old and well-dressed, short gray hair, medals. His expression was calm, reflecting that certain dignity that comes with age to some people. He looked like someone who had seen many things during the time he'd spent on Earth. Hello? Let me be clear, no. We're not going to try and hurt you because we know that would be extremely difficult and because we're not here for that. We're here to talk. Do you understand me? The voice of the old man was extremely calm. He was professional. Like this was nothing unusual for him. For response, he made a nod of approbation. It was enough for the old man. Good. Let me introduce myself. I'm George Bowie, United States Army General or at least former general. As of today, I'm the new general-in-chief of the Chaos Insurgency, not responsible for the name, and I'm looking for people or entities who can help me with a great plan. I need your help. This was a thing he did not understand. What was Bowie talking about? The unclean? Supporters of the unclean? In that case, why... Couldn't he smell them, or feel them, or see them? Was Bowie aware of their existence? What was a chaos insurgency, and why did it matter who was responsible for its name? What is a United States Army General? Bowie turned to his men. Lower your weapons, I want to have a conversation, just him and I. The men executed the order in silence, which he thought was the mark of a great leader. He still wasn't sure what Bowie meant about his great plan, but maybe the general could help him instead. Bowie breathed a sigh of relief. I've known about you for a long while, but it was time to see you in person. I am happy to see that you seem willing to listen to me. No one had ever told him that they'd known of his existence for a long time. His eyes widened in surprise, of course. He hadn't met many people who weren't already his servants. Bowie also seemed surprised at his lack of a verbal response. The general was surely expecting him to reply with some frustration, or at least say something at all. Not really talkative, I see. That's not a problem. This will go faster with less talk. You do understand me. Again, he nodded with approbation. Good. Phony greetings and speeches, talking for hours and saying nothing, always had a tendency to bore me. It still does. I suppose you know what war is. Once more, he nodded. Then you won't be surprised by what I'm going to tell you. Then, we're in one. And our adversary holds power beyond the realms of belief. These men are members of a group called the Chaos Insurgency, dedicated to embracing the anomalous part of the world, with men like you. We will explain more about that in time. Are you willing to help us? He stayed silent as usual. Then, after a moment, he smiled and followed them. Well, I'm not entirely sure, but... Speaking about the unclean, religious fervor, and the tears, I have a suspicion that they're talking about 093, the Amber Disc, or rather, what's on the other end of the portal of the Amber Disc. We've never met it ourselves, but perhaps we just did. Ah well, 
Thank you very much for coming, everyone. It's been an honor being able to read for you. And I'll see you researchers next time.